Good morning and welcome to Cobblestone's Chronicles. Um, I'm delighted this morning to be here. Sorry I haven't been here for um, a few weeks, but um, COVID struck and both my husband and I have been rather sick. So it's good to be back to normal, bouncing along and being here on such a lovely um, day. It's got some sunshine outside today on Thursday, which is really good to see. And um, the first thing I'm going to do this morning is because I had planned to do a program with lots and lots of local music in it because it was, May was um, New Zealand Music Month. So I'm going to play you, um, I'm going to play you a track called Moonstruck from a group called the Raven Mavens Quartet. And there's four of them, and one of them, Kate Marshall, is a local lady, and she's absolutely fantastic, multi-instrumental musician. Um, she's very, very, very talented, and, and she's a lovely person as well. So... Here we go. I'm going to play you Moonstruck with Kate, featuring Kate Marshall and the Raven Mavens. There's a silver lining whenever at the moon Shining brightly Suspended nightly In the corner of my room But here's a word of warning The dark side is never shown She's not a star She's bad and scarred Flying round and round on her own She's a reckless charmer when she's low in the sky But it's an illusion and in the confusion she looks much larger than life So hear my word of warning about this elusive day She waxes and wanes, she'll drive you insane and leave you at the break of day So that was Moonstruck with Kate Marshall from Raven Mavens Quartet and it's off their CD, the Raven Mavens Quartet. It's a really good CD if you can get hold of it. So this morning, Cobblestones Chronicles, I'm delighted to be talking to you because it's almost Cobblestones' birthday. 
So cobblestones was first opened in to the public in June 1971 and it was it was started a few years earlier by a young man who was then a young man who um the who was a member of the local JC's chapter and it was it was his idea to buy the land that the um Tully house was um then on and it was up for sale and the original castwell stables and the original cobbles were still there and he thought well we should be we should be preserving this for future generations this is you know it's a bit of our history and the the whole thing was that um cobblestones and greytown was quite unique because it was the first planned inland town in New Zealand. And it had been planned by the Small Farms Association. And for the grand sum of £40, you could buy a piece of land of 40 acres, which was outside the town, and a one-acre lot inside the town. So the idea was you would live in the town and you'd farm your 40 acres outside the town and it was um it was that was um, around the same time at the as the great town trust lands trust was set up with the excess sections so that great town trust lands trust would be able to give um funding and help to the to the people of the town so it would be a, a trust for the good of of the town and Cobblestones itself um, has been very fortunate in having a number of grants from Great Hound Trust Lands Trust. And indeed, the, um, the JCs um, managed to get enough money to buy a big piece of the land with the stables and the Tully House on, on it. But there was also the, um, <clears throat> there was the rest of the land which Great Anne Trust Lands Trust bought and which at the moment they lease back to Cobblestones so that we can have the rest of our buildings on the on in the in the in the village. So it's wonderful to see that we've been able to move on some of these wonderful old buildings and we have a conservation plan for each of the buildings, which is really important because we want to make sure that they last for another 100 years or 150 years. So hence we have the um, Donald Woolshed, which was moved down from Masterton, which is a great example of an original Woolshed. We have the Monga Pekeha School, which was moved from close to Tinui, and um, that's a great example of a schoolhouse. We have the original Greytown Hospital, which um, was moved onto the land. It wasn't moved quite as far as some of the other ones because it's just across the road, really. But um, that's a really good example of a cottage hospital. And in fact, I believe it was the first cottage hospital in the Wairarapa. We're also lucky because we have um, the first church which was built in the Wararapa. That's also on our site. And we have the cottage, which is the iconic cottage, as you often see. If um, if you come to Cobblestones, do make sure you go and look in each of the buildings, because each of them has its own story to tell. So, on Saturday night in the Great Anne Hotel, we're going to have a lovely birthday party because Cobblestones was opened in June 1971. And last year we were, in, we were intending to have a party, but um, a few things got in our way, like lockdowns and stuff like that, blasted COVID. So 
We're celebrating at the end of our 50th year of operation. So we're really looking forward to it. And I know that Don Knight, whose idea it was originally, um, he is coming down from Taronga to celebrate with us as well, as well as a number of people who have been involved with cobblestones over the last 50 years. And we're most grateful to them because we wouldn't have the wonderful icon that cobblestones is today without their foresight and without their powers of persuasion. So, um, I'm going to play you another song now. I'm going to play you um, a, a song called moving on because we're moving on as cobblestones um we have lots of plans a couple of months ago we had our um head of collections and exhibitions joseph here who's also our deputy chair um, was talking about it and cobblestones the thing about it is it's we've never stood still we've always been developing we've always been adding we've always been putting new things into the collection and we have some exciting plans for the next year to be able to give people who come and visit a real experience of what the stables were like and about you know what was it like to travel on this on a coach and you know what 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 was life like in the 1870s 1880s 1890s into the 1900s so here we go here is moving on by Alan Downs, um, who's a re mm, recovering farmer, he calls himself. He was a hill farmer in the Hawke's Bay, in the central Hawke's Bay, just up the state highway to a bit. And um, he now writes um, music and songs about what it was like to be a farmer. Here you go. With half a beer on the counter, I've half a mind to leave This city and its siren song found the dark side of me I drifted in from the outside, washed up on the streets If promises were currency, life would be so sweet I'm moving on I'm moving on down to the city When you put the miles in between Reality and where you want to be You see the other side of your mind That's what I found with me People, they don't see you When you're walking down the street In reality, you're only one more Passing pair of feet Moving on Moving on down to the city I thought I heard a brand new song Wandered past my mind I caught it on the iPad as it left me far behind Guitar in my clumsy hand Words floating by Like the siren of an ambulance They flash and then they die Moving on Moving on down to the city Where the sun is always shining in your memory Fantasy becomes your sanctuary Yesterday and its dreams fade into what could have been And tomorrow no longer seems so far away I'm moving on Moving on down to the city Well, I take what comes my way There are faces, but no names Images that came and went, only impressions remain 
Memories like colour schemes so bold until they fade We touch them up as we recall and say they are the same Truth is moving on Moving on out of our memory and Saw you just the other day A picture on a Facebook page To me you look just the same But the smile seems to fade You wear your hair a different way More careful where you play Forever can be deeply stained By what people think you say Moving on Moving on down to the city With half a beer on the counter I've half a mind to leave This city and its siren song Found the dark side of me I'm drifting on Drifting in from the outside Where the sun is always shining in your memory Fantasy becomes your sanctuary Yesterday and its dreams fade into what could have been And tomorrow no longer seems so far away Moving on I'm moving on down to the city Yes, I'm moving on That was Moving On with um, Alan Downs, a, a retired, well, maybe not retired, recovering farmer. He certainly doesn't farm anymore, although he has moved back to the Hawke's Bay. You can take the boy off the farm, but you need to remember that the farm's still in the boy. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit now about um, Cobblestones Museum because it's... Um, as I said, it's over 50 years. And next week, is uh, on, or the week after, it's a couple of weeks' time, is Volunteers Week. And I really want to take this opportunity of acknowledging the volunteers who have kept cobblestones going for 50 years. It's an extraordinary, extraordinary um, feat to manage it, to keep the museum going. We've in that time we've had occasionally a part time paid administrator, but for much of that time it's been kept going by volunteers and they are an amazing bunch of people. They have done things like raised enough money to um to build a new building. And if you are watching this program as well as listening to it, you'll see now the new entrance building that was opened um, a few years ago. And it's um, it really did add to the professionalism of the museum because it gave us a place where we could actually have the, host the collection of items that we've been given and catalogue all the items so that we know what we got and who gave it to us, which is really important. Um, it's also a proper exhibition space so that we can change exhibitions, we can bring in new things every now and again. And um, it's really... It's really good to be able to have this space so that we have our buildings outside the in the grounds because we've got two acres of grounds. But we also have this professionally laid out exhibition space. And we've noticed how engaging it is, how people love to watch what and see what they can um, what they can have um, and how important it is. Um, it also, it's not just the buildings outside. So if you are watching, then you'll see um, our grounds and our buildings. But we also have um, the, the cottage and the other buildings that are so important. But we need to have somewhere where we can actually organise what we're doing. 
And that's what our exhibition hall and entranceway and offices can do. There's also a nice shop in there if you want to buy some um, gifts and things like that. We have some very nice New Zealand, we specialise in New Zealand made bits and pieces. So, you know, come gift time, do come into the shop, it's worth having a look at. So in this bit, um, in the photograph, if you are watching, you'll see that we've got cobbles. And the, the cobble courtyard um, between the stables and Main Street is really important because it shows you this is where the coaches came in. It was important that we had cobbles there so that... Um, uh, the coaches and the other vehicles didn't sink into the mud and there weren't big ruts everywhere so that was um, very much part of it and we'd look after our cobbles we make sure that we don't drive across them for example um, and I have to say they're a bit interesting to walk on because sometimes on our open days and you know special days I get dressed up in a Victorian style costume and swan around with my huge skirts um, and complete with um, a very huge with a huge underskirt to help me um, w wear it it's actually really important to wear the underskirt because then it makes it easier to walk believe it or not but how people walked across the cobbles wearing wooden soled shoes or or platforms I just don't know because it's really difficult to walk just in ordinary flat boots never mind um, wooden soled with no flexibility in them um the um, co cobblestones has gone from strength to strength over the years and every even in COVID years the last couple of years we've managed to keep our numbers of visitors um, to a reasonable level even though normally we would have a big dependency on overseas visitors but in fact one of the things that's happened it's rather nice is that lots of New Zealanders have been traveling around and they have come into cobblestones as they've been passing to have a look and see what what's what's in here what is this heritage village and it's lovely to see how um, people are travelling around. New Zealanders are discovering their own country um, because we haven't been able to go overseas. And they have been bringing their children. And often we have grandchildren and uh, grand grandparents and gr their grandchildren come in and talk about, oh, look at this old washing machine. This is what my mother had. And they often... I mean, I can remember um, when my mother had a washing machine. It was very exciting because it had a ringer on it. And my own dear husband tells me a story about he's one of four boys. And I think they got up to a lot of mischief sometimes because he remembers one of his brothers getting his arm trapped in the ringer all the way through so I hate to think how he, he fortunately he wasn't too badly hurt but I hate to think how he managed to do that so it's wonderful to see especially on our open days when we haul out the old washing machines and show people how they were used and we have our our volunteers who come in uh, particularly on open days and get out the the tub and the the scrubbing board and kids can have a go in doing the washing the old-fashioned way and um, we also try and do um, some races and we have fun you know showing people how things used to be in old days so i'm going to um, play another song now i'm going to play a, a tune called the magpie um, the magpie is um, is based on the um, children's rhymes. You know, you see one magpie and it's it's joy. 
to magpies. It's a superstitious rhyme. So I'm going to, it's by Nigel Parry, sung by Nigel Parry from his CD, Row Out to Your Ship of Dreams. And Nigel is an import from um, Yorkshire to New, New Zealand some years ago. But um, he's a proud New Zealander now. So, and he also has a very nice voice and plays guitar really well. So here we go, the magpie. The magpie brings us tidings Of news both fair and foul She's more cunning than the raven More wise than anyhow She brings us news of harvests Of barley, wheat and corn she knows when we'll go to our graves And how we shall be born One's for sorrow, two's for joy Three for a girl and four for a boy Five for silver, six for gold Seven for a secret never ever told Devil, you devil, now I defy thee Devil, you devil, now I defy thee. Devil, you devil, now I defy thee. She brings us good news from the right, bad news from the left. Of all the birds that are in the air We know to trust her best For she sees us at our labor And she mocks us at our work She steals the egg from out of the nest And she can mob the whole One's for sorrow, two's for joy Three for a girl and four for a boy Five for silver, six for gold Seven for a secret never ever told Devil, you devil, now I defy thee Devil, you devil, now I defy thee Devil, you devil, now I defy thee Priest, he says we're wicked to worship the devil's bird. Ah, but we respect the old ways and we disregard his word. For we know they rest uneasy while we slumber in the night. And we always leave a little bit of meat for the bird. That is black and white One's for sorrow, two's for joy Three for a girl and four for a boy Five for silver, six for gold Seven for a secret never ever told Devil, you devil, now I defy thee Devil, you devil, now I Devil, you devil, now I defy thee. That was Nigel Parry with the magpie and the um, the old superstition about um, if you see a magpie, you must say good morning, Mr. Magpie. Um, the Cobblestones Museum uh, was originally opened on Queen's Birthday Weekend in 1971, as I said. And um, the JCs said that the opening was a resounding success. 
and there was um, $1,600 raised from donations, commemorative envelopes and some fun activities as well. Um, then there was also on the Labour Weekend, which included opening of the Cottage Museum, previously the Tully House, which um, was moved off the site so that we could build the new building. The museum has adopted the approach of dividing the collection into two classifications. The first is the primary collection, which are the various buildings registered by Category 2 by Heritage New Zealand. They have got specific individual con conservation and maintenance plans, and these require the buildings to be maintained and kept in their original form. The secondary collection comprises the numerous interesting objects which relate to the Wairarapa story. Now, we've been working with a local um, lady called Jen Craddock recently, who's given us some fantastic ideas about... She's a, a professional museum um, curator, and um, she's given us fantastic ideas about what we can do to make the story of the stables more obvious and interesting. So we're just about to start working on the on that sta on the, the stables and producing this um, new st opportunity to tell the story because we're always looking for ways to improve. As a group of trustees, that's our job, is not just to maintain but to make sure that there's always something new to see. And um, we, um, we also have a group of volunteers who are very helpful and useful in maintaining our collection. And our collection includes such interesting things as um, old carts and old bits of machinery. And if you're watching on TV at the moment, I've just popped up a, a picture of a cart that was recently restored. And this is actually a replica of cart which was made for the 1990 um, reenactment of the um, coastal route when people came round the coast because of course there wasn't a road over the Rimataka Hill in those days and um, people came round the coast on, on the coastal kind of a road and um, this cart was used as a bullet cart to reenact that. And it's amazing to think that, that bullocks pulled carts like these along, along around the coast all the way from Wellington. It was an amazing feat of, you know, work. And it took days, of course. So it's interesting to think about, you know, how we, I don't know about you, but... You know, if I have to go over the Rimatakas, um, I have been known to have a bit of a grumble about the road, particularly if it's raining or if it's a bit slippy. But um, when I first came to the Wairarapa, it was over 20 years ago, then um, we came over the Rimatakas and there was the, the famous corner called Muldoon's Corner, which was very twisty. <clears throat> um, not too sure why it was named after Mr Muldoon, but there you go. And um, it was a very sharp, twisty corner. And, of course, that's gone now, and that's been... Um, the Several of the corners have been straightened out a bit, so it's not quite so bad. But it's still an interesting way of getting across. And I don't know if any of you have been to the Fell Engine Museum in Featherston, but that's a fantastic, really interesting museum with the fell engines. And a friend of mine actually remembers coming across uh, to visit her father, who lived in the Wairarapa, um, coming across using, going through the old tunnels and using the fell engine. And she said it took it took half, you know, more than half a day, um, which of course these days it only takes. Um, what, an hour and ten minutes, something like that, to get into Wellington. And um, 
So it's really, for me, it's really interesting to look back and think, wow, people came over on carts, like um, very simple carts, you know, with four wheels and and um, a brake and a seat, and then they put other seats in the back uh, where you could sit on the goods that were being brought over the hill for the passengers. Not exactly the most comfortable way of getting across, I reckon. So, I think we might have um, uh, another song. So, I, I picked out um, a song called Planes and Trains, since I'm talking about transport. Um, this is by a group called Into the East, which is um, two musicians who um, have who made this CD some time ago. It's called Fight from the Inside, and um, I think you'll enjoy it. So here we go, Planes and Trains. <laughs> The magpie brings us tidings Planes and trains and boats and cars They all take me far away Alleyways that lead to stages, bright lights and carpet faces. Far away is good enough for some. Hotel sheets and city lights, they're all wonderful to begin. But the glory falls out of your stories when you're the only one to tell them to. Some will love you, some will want you, some will weave the yarn into. That was Into the East and Plains and Trains. Um, Into the East are Liv McBride and Graham Waller. And um, this is a self-produced CD, as a lot of the CDs in New Zealand are. So if you see um, a New Zealand-produced CD, 
please do buy it or support the artists because they put their heart and soul into doing these and we we get this wonderful music so i now want to talk a little bit about some of the things that we're going to be doing next month which is july in july in greytown as i'm sure a lot of you know we have this um celebration called the festival of christmas and it started because um we thought well it would be nice to have something fun in july and the festival of christmas and everybody thinks about christmas um well if if you grew up in the northern hemisphere somewhere or if you spent much time in the northern hemisphere you always think about christmas as being cold and i have to admit that i'm still confused even after living in new zealand for mostly for 30 something years um it's it's still a bit confusing to have a midsummer christmas and personally i've always done a, a midwinter celebration as well so in Greytown we have a midwinter Christmas and uh, throughout July and it's fun because um, people join in. We don't have Santa. This year we've got a gingerbread person and at Cobblestones we're even having a gingerbread competition which will be a lot of fun. Um, because we're going to crown the best home baker adult version and the best junior home baker so look out for um on our website and on our facebook page for details of that competition because it will be a lot of fun and if you consider yourself a really good home baker it's worth entering it <clears throat> we've got some um exciting judges including some younger judges because after all gingerbread is mostly made for them isn't it um we we've also got what else have we got going on in july oh yes we got matariki on the first saturday in july we're going to be celebrating matariki at cobblestones and we're going to have some fun things for people to do uh, including we're going to have some um workshops talking about you know the origins of matariki and what what is matariki you know how how is what does it actually mean so that it's really useful to to start knowing the really interesting workshops um we'll also for the younger members of the family you'll be able to make matariki stars because of course matariki is about the seven sisters stars rising um in the east in the morning and if you are get up early in the morning it's worth seeing it they they're rising just over the horizon at, um not quite yet we have to wait another three weeks or so and then you'll start to see them in in the morning and it's worth if it's a clear morning get up if it's frosty, um, it's worth going to see, trying to see the Matariki stars. We'll also have um, a very Victorian Christmas where we'll be making Victorian Christmas decorations and we'll have our beautifully traditionally decorated Christmas tree in the church and you'll be able to make Christmas decorations and hang them on the Christmas tree. Another weekend we'll have a very woolly Christmas. So a really woolly, a, ro a really good Christmas um, is all about sheep. It's all about wool. It's all about um, sheep. And it, you'll be able to see a sheep being shorn with hand blades. And it always amazes me watching sheep being shorn because they kind of zone out. It's a bit like going to the hairdressers and you just sit back and let somebody cut your hair nicely although the poor sheep don't get the nice shampoo as well um and we'll and we're hoping to have some spinners and weavers there which will be excellent to see um and um, the spinners and what happens to wool 
Um, children will be able to make their own miniature size sheep to take home, complete with a wool with wool on it. We're hoping to get some knitters there to make some Peggy squares. And if you've always wanted to know, well, how do you make a Peggy square blanket? Then come along to the um, to cobblestones in July and see it. We'll also have our yummy food on sale and mulled wine and maybe a special new beer which will be quite exciting because you'll be able to try it first um, at Cobblestones. It'll be good, be really good. We're really looking forward to it. We'll also have a day of celebration at the last um, Saturday in July where we've invited lots of our local talent to come along and show us, perform for us, um, dance school, uh, we'll have um, dancing, we'll have hula hoop, we'll have lots of really good fun things. But as I get more details um, towards July, then I'll, let, I'll certainly let you know. Um, I think I might play another song because one of the things always strikes me about um, Victorian times is the Victorians were real romantics weren't they and they they were quite um, they had all these um, interesting ideas and they I'm kind of glad I didn't live then because um, my grandmother and my great aunt were both born in the end of the 19th century and they lived through it um, the late Victorian times into Edwardian times. There were both of them suffragettes and stood up for women's rights. They would have been young women in the um, uh, after just after the First World War. And both of them had careers, most unusual for that time, but they actually both had careers. So although it was a romantic time and there was lots of poetry written and um, um, sadness as well, you know, sort of star-crossed lovers and lots of stuff like that, um, a modern romance is, is a little bit different. So I'm going to play a modern romance track, um, another track from the Raven Mavens Quartet. And these um, songs are all written by Cindy Muggeridge, who's a, a wonderful lady, another great um, multi-instrumentalist. I always admire people who play not just one musical instrument, but a whole load. So I hope you'll enjoy this, The Art of Romance. said that lick is quicker than candy But if you want a chance for some sweet romance Candy's dandy There's short-term gain, long-term pain That'll drive you out of your head I'll tell you why without a word of a lie The art of romance ain't dead The art of romance is alive and well If you take a chance You can never tell You might find yourself a model or a millionaire Or just a sweet baby bring you breakfast in bed I tell you why without a word of a lie The art of romance ain't the oldest game in town and everybody wants to play it if all is fair and love and war well who's to say it the rules have never been written down and the stakes are higher than hell I'll tell you why without a word of a lie the art of romance ain't dead the 
art of romance is alive and well. If you take a chance, you can never tell. You might find yourself a model or a millionaire, or just a sweet baby. Bring your breakfast in bed. I tell you why, without a word of a lie, the art of romance ain't dead. The Art of Romance Ain't Dead. Isn't that a wonderful um, song? I, I love listening to the Raven Mavens, and um, they are w well worth trying to catch out. They, they often play here locally. Well, that's almost the end of Cobblestone's Chronicles for this week. I just want to say thank you so much for listening and for watching, if you're watching on TV. And I also want to say, if you're interested in history, if you're interested in the um, Cobblestones Museum, come along. Um, we're always looking for new volunteers. We love to have people come and join us. And you can do all kinds of things from being welcoming people who come to the museum through the front desk. Um, you can be um, helping restore some or um, conserve some of our tong, so some of the old buildings, some of the wonderful um, carts, carriages, machinery. If you've got an interest in machinery, come along. We're lots of fun. Um, if you like gardening and if you like, you know, if you're interested in helping us keep the grounds looking wonderful, then get in touch with us either by phoning us um, the phone number's on our Facebook page and it's also on our, our website. So we'd love to have you be part of this wonderful icon of the Wairarapa. Rapa. And it does cover the whole of the Wairarapa. Rapa. You'll find we have volunteers from all around the place. So that's it from me. So kakite until next time. Bye. <laughs>